So I had a thought the other day when I was sat in my studio, percolating on my current paintings, that I should call my current series Truly, Madly, Deeply. And then I realised that it felt connected to how I was living my life right now, in the middle of all this crazy world situation. Truly being myself, madly stumbling along the bumpy ride, and deeply feeling everything. I realised that finding joy again doesn't have to mean that everything is joyful. I felt I needed something on the horizon, something to look forward to. In this video, I'm sharing our van preparations for getting out on the road again. No, not full time, not ever again, but summer weekends away, adventuring, walking and feeling free. James has also made the improvements and modifications in my studio now, so I'm sharing those too one of which is truly life-saving. <laughs> I've also been reading my old blog. Did you know I wrote a blog for several years? It's something I started when I left my teaching career and I kept it up through the process of letting go of everything and leaving my life behind for full-time van adventures. It's not live anymore and so I asked James the other day to help me access it again as I was curious about what I wrote it was vulnerable and true, and I think I'll read a post out here and there in the land of YouTube. Perhaps write a book from it all one day, all about the unexpected adventures. Right. Do you need me? Bed. 
from this thing here down the line. Because I see it roughly. What, what? Should we do it as the um, as it drops? And just what do you mean? As, as gravity pulls it, and then put your hand across what hand you think is level. Right Turn your there. hand the other way. What? Turn your point your hand the other way. There. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's level. I can't see. Well, that's that near enough, right. isn't it? It's not, well, <laughs> we're not. That's. Shall I do centimeters or inches? Do it inches. So you figure number is easier, isn't it? Twenty-six. Inches drop. Twenty six drop. Drop. <laughs> and then. Uh, Twenty six. How wide are we going this end? Um. Let's put your tape up there, and I'll tell you. Yeah. About there. Yeah. About there. And then. More or less. That's pretty good. Yeah, but it's forty nine. Yeah. I, I like the number. Forty nine plus you do one and a half thirty or something to the curtains. I'm just doing the window first. I'll add the I'll add, I'll add the seams when I get upstairs. All right, brother. Just do like so. That's the drop, and that's that. So that's both of these. Yeah. Yeah. What is it? Forty nine. That's forty nine as well. Yeah. Wow. Ideally, we want it going down below the bottom rung. Okay. Say to avoid avoid drafts. So that's 35 inch to it. That should look really nice with curtains. And then we've got, what have we got? We'll give you a proper look at the van. But this is the floor. And then James has put carpet on the walls. And then we've done a kind of collage map on the ceiling. And James put the roof light in. Did you do anything else? Just oh yeah, and put the bed in, insulated it and put the um, boot on in. I heard you say You found the story All tucked away In the back of the room Been lost for years Far away of our day-to-day -day routine in the corner of our minds we're not in blue we're not in mourning to raise the truth it takes more than So I found a blog post to read out. It was written in 2014 on the 4th of December. So that was about, just to put it into context, about a year and a half after we'd run away from everything. And the blog post is called Listening to My Heart, Part One. Over a year ago, I created a morning routine to support my well-being, and I rarely stray from that. But this morning, I did. 
I left the house early to go for a walk and to enjoy the rare sunshine. A crisp, bright frost and a brisk stomp out into nature. Very uplifting, I have to say. And I was thinking, I haven't updated this blog in so long. I wondered why that was. And I know that I've been hiding as per usual, but why? Writing this blog makes me vulnerable and out there, and quite often I don't like that feeling. I've even experienced a small amount of hate mail from an anonymous source, although not quite as anonymous as they thought, and it was traced and recorded with the police. Quite often I've experienced the dilemma of that fine line between honesty and sharing too much self. I think I've written about that a few times now. But anyway, this morning has inspired me to write and put some vulnerability out there on my blog. It's cold here, and when it is sunny, it is beautiful. But most of the time, there is that thick, familiar blanket of cloud. This grey, flat, monotonous light does little to inspire me. Don't get me wrong, I do love the UK countryside, but the same cannot be said about the climate. There were grey and wet days, of course, while we were abroad last winter, but not the consistent cold like this. It's an obvious yet very powerful difference to wake up to, and it is a negative influence to my sunny disposition. I don't feel good here. I don't feel home. I feel disconnected much of the time. I don't want to live my life spent without the connection to nature every day. Living in this concrete suburban jungle, made up of silly rules that I just don't agree with, but having to conform anyway, because that's what is expected of me. I take myself back to when I was a little girl. I was always the rebel, the one asking lots of why questions, the one who spoke her mind whenever something happened that just seemed stupid, unfair or unjust. I lost this part of myself somewhere in school, where my once big voice became small and quiet and timid, as all I wanted to do was somehow fit in and be acceptable. But I was never enough. My ears were wrong, my teeth were wrong, my voice was wrong. I was never going to be considered acceptable in this environment, but still I tried. I felt like a misfit, and this feeling stayed with me. I remember that at certain times I would feel connected to myself whilst creating, painting, writing and singing. One day when I was 14, I was sitting in my art class, painting maybe shells, or maybe mixing paint for a cement mixer I had drawn. When the school bully started making fun of my work, this was not unusual. She had been picking on me regularly for some time. And she pushed it a stage further that day by splatting paint on my painting. Now, I knew I was scared of her. She was built like a tank. No one I knew stood up to her. But I also knew that from the tight feeling in my stomach that she had gone too far. So I spatted paint right back. The teacher didn't see and I didn't tell him. When we got outside after class she was waiting for me. I had stood up to her in front of her friends and she didn't like it. So she hit me to the ground as my punishment. I learned a big lesson that day. I had stood up because I knew I had the right to protect myself. I took my power back. I showed her that even though I was scared, I would not tolerate her behaviour towards me. I'm sure she learned a big lesson right back. She knew she had won the ego fight, but the winning part didn't matter. She knew she had hurt me, and by doing so, she had hurt herself. I had a boyfriend at the time, my first boyfriend, if I don't count Michael when I was five. He was in the year above me, and he used to smoke at the school gates. Cool, huh? This bully girl, I even remember her full name, used to smoke there too. A few days after the event, she told him she respected me and would be leaving me alone from now on. I had behaved with honour to myself, even when faced with fear. I wonder if she remembers any of this.
My real connection to self came and went. Sometimes I remember knowing something didn't feel right, but just going along with it anyway. I rarely questioned anything openly anymore. I was a grown-up and should behave like one. I was a mother now and must earn an income. I graduated in art, but later went into teaching. I remember being offered my first teaching post and feeling a heavy dread in the depths of my belly, but hearing myself accept the job during that phone call. Everyone was congratulating me, while inside I felt like I'd sold my soul. It wasn't anything to do with the children, they were adorable, but this job made me desperately unhappy stole away my time from being present with my daughter. It took a car crash one morning on the way to that school to wake me up. Someone had been driving too fast up a blind hill. He hit the car behind me. She had to be cut out of her car and sustained serious back injuries. I was lucky to not have been in that car. I remember people asking afterwards what had happened and not being able to tell my story fully. Most people heard the first part that someone went into the back of me and I sustained a whiplash. Happens all the time. But it was more serious than that, with five or six cars involved. We blocked the road for hours. The worst part for me was the shock and being physically trapped in my car. It shook me up, gave me months of panic attacks, years of physical pain and therapy. And yet, it also saved me. On my part-time therapeutic return to school, I handed in my notice to that head teacher. She was probably as happy to see me go as I was to leave. But I wouldn't allow myself to be bullied. I had learnt that lesson. So that dynamic was never going to work out. By saying yes to that job, I had broken one of my most important rules. I had made the decision based solely on my ego and ignored my heart that most sacred place where I am connected to source. And I knew it was the wrong decision back then, and that's why I felt I had sold my soul. So now, I try really hard to remember to ask myself the following when making decisions. If I say yes to this, what am I saying no to? And is the thing I'm sacrificing more important than the thing I'm saying yes to? Nowadays, whenever I ask this question while connecting to my true soul essence, I feel deeply real, centred, grounded and safe. But I still hadn't learnt my lesson. More to come in part two next week as this post is already too long. Thanks for reading. Got it now. Oh, both got it. So I didn't come in the studio yesterday because I went on a little adventure in the van with James and it was lovely. It was absolutely amazing. So we went to the coast and it's really wild and yeah, it was awesome. Really fantastic day. So I've made it into the studio this morning and the plan is initially I'm going to do a little bit of painting. We've got shop orders to do and the post, posting those. And then the other thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to start sewing the curtains for the van. Yeah, really excited about that. And yeah, just see how I get on. But that's the broad plan-ish kind of thing. So I'm just having my green tea. So let's have some tea together, shall we? Cheers to you if you're having tea or coffee or anything else. It actually feels like summer today. I think it's 21 degrees here already. So I've got the fan on. There's a little bit of background noise. Sorry about that, but it just keeps it nice and cool and keeps the air circulating. I've managed to get the window to stay open as well, so it, that's really open now. So that should keep the room a bit cooler. Excellent. And the only other thing that James has got left to do in here uh, regarding the 
studio mods is to put a curtain wire up as high as you can get one so I can block this window from the sun coming in and then just keep the room a little bit cooler. When I was little I always used to think it was really weird that grown-ups talked about the weather all the time but it really does make such a difference doesn't it and just coming out in my sandals this morning and not needing any cardio or anything like that it was absolutely lovely. You just have more freedom with everything don't you in the summer it feels anyway everything can feel brighter when the sun's out. <laughs> wow so that's so much better now with that blocking the sun coming in it's cooler already so I'm so grateful that he's just dropped everything to do that for me and it, it was a bit um, scary in parts to uh, see him on the windowsill because it's a, it's a really narrow windowsill but uh, yeah acrobatics were needed. <laughs> So I'm just going to sort the studio out a bit, ready for shop orders, and then James is going to come through when he's ready and help, and then I can get painting in my new cooler space. Perfect. So good morning, I'm just sat here quietly having tea. So let's have tea, shall we? I've got my uh, matcha green tea with a little bit of agave in there. So it's not, it doesn't go bitter when I leave the tea bag in. And, and I do know this does have caffeine in it, but it's a different kind of um, boost than coffee. And I haven't had coffee yet and I'm not missing it anymore. So it's really good. Feel better for it. I've been in the studio since 8am this morning. I wanted to open up the, the, the roof light, the skylight window to keep the, the room really cool for the day. So yesterday I got really carried away and really into um, my painting. So, and I did actually start another one as well. So I didn't get any of my sewing done on my curtains and they're all cut out ready now because I laid all the fabric out at home on my living room floor. And James helped me work out how to measure it and where to cut and things like that. So I think this morning I'm going to start sewing those and then James will put some curtain rails up in the van and then I can probably show you how they turn out next week. I don't think I'll be able to show you in this video because I don't think I'll have them finished. I'm not very good at sewing. I'm no expert. My mum's really, really good at sewing. One of my sisters is really, really good at sewing, but I'm not. Yeah, so I've got quite a basic sewing machine which went travelling with me as well. I took it all the way across Europe um, over the years while we were living in the van because I had to make van curtains for each van we had. We had uh, one, two, three, this is our fourth van and we've, we've come back to a really small van um, which is actually a, a Mercedes v Vito so you can't stand up in it but that was the first van we, we ever had um, and we've got a slightly longer it's a slightly longer wheelbase, so it's a little bit bigger than the first van we had. But uh, I will do a video about the van life days. Um, I, I don't have any video footage, actually, because I wasn't vlogging or anything then. I was actually blogging. I did, I blogged for about five, five and a half years, maybe six years. Anyway, that blog's not up, but I am thinking of putting a video together, like a photo montage and a little bit of um, the story behind everything because I know that is one of the things I get asked quite a lot. Anyway, finish my tea and then get sewing. I'm excited because I haven't sewn for years. I can't remember the last time I, I played with my sewing machine. So fingers crossed, it all goes okay. The other thing that you can't see is the fact that my studio is, apart from this lo lovely little corner, my painting space, the rest of the studio is quite messy. And the Oval Office in particularly needs me to have a good sort out. So I'm just going to kind of clear one side of it. And yeah, I've got plant babies everywhere because I've taken them all off the windowsill because of the drapes. I didn't want them to get damaged with the drapes blowing around with the fan on and the, the drapes and stuff. And I've pushed that one right back to the window. I don't know if you can see. Hang on a sec. So there you go. That's a little bit more of an idea. Take you up there. He got as high as he could yesterday. And I think what we're going to do, as the sun moves around to this window over here, um, that one, I'm going to get him to put the wire up just slightly higher, just to block a little bit more sun. Those curtains are really super long because it's actually, um, it's actually a, a, a sari I got from a charity shop ages ago. 
And they used to be the curtains that were hanging in our conservatory when we had a house. And that's all part of the story of the, uh, how we came to travel in the van for so many years. So I, I will put that in the video as well. And it was a lovely house. So I kept those because I really, really liked them. And then I had them up in my first studio here, which wasn't the last one that you saw me in. It was a one before that, before I started vlogging. Hang on a sec, I think there's a fire engine. I didn't hang any curtains in my last studio because, yeah, the light was perfect. I didn't need to block the sunlight out. Uh, so it does depend on where the, where the sun falls, doesn't it, in your room. But yeah, that's what I'm dealing with. And obviously I can't sew on that mess. I've basically got plant babies everywhere. So hmm, I have to find um, homes because there's some, some down there as well in, that, in the hospital. I'm actually doing much better now, so. So these are, these are going to be for the side windows and I had enough fabric to double them up and there are some tears and holes in this fabric which I am going to repair. I've got some um, webbing that you iron on so I'm going to use some of this fabric to make tie backs and also repair the curtains and we wanted them sort of double thickness because it's quite thin material and then this one is two curtains for the back of the van. Um, and I'm thinking I might need to buy an iron to help me. But I don't own an iron anymore and I haven't re-bought one. It's not one of the things that I use or miss. But when I'm sewing, I probably could do with one. So we'll see how I get on anyway. So I'm doing really well. Uh, the first one hasn't gone perfectly. There's a couple of little things that could have gone better, but it's not too bad. I think that kind of just means I haven't quite cut the fabric quite evenly, but it's absolutely fine. And I've left one of the side seams open so that when I need to mend the fabric where the holes are, when I eventually get an iron, yeah, I think I do need an iron because the other fabric is a lot thicker than this fabric. And I've struggled with this one, so I'm going to have to get a little cheap bargain iron this week sometime. Yeah, so once I do that, I can still get in there to, to do the repairs. But yeah, that's the top. So that's one of our side curtains. So I'm going to do the other one, and then I'm going to have to wait and do the back doors when I get my iron. Okay, whenever that is. Because I don't think it's going to be possible for me to actually get the seams right. Anyway, thanks for keeping me company while I've been painting and sewing this week. Thanks for all the lovely comments on the last video as well. And I hope you have a lovely weekend. Try to keep your lights shining bright, as bright as you can. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. Bye. <laughs> I heard you say You found the story All tucked away